Hello, welcome to another video. I know in the past we talked about how to multiply and how to add matrices, but today I want to talk to you about this concept of determinant, the determinant of a matrix. I also explained in the previous video that when you write a matrix this way, this is a matrix, but when the bars on the side are straight up, you call them determinants and those are numbers. So let me tell you uh, maybe four things uh, in particular about, um, about determinants. The first thing is that the determinant of a matrix can be calculated only if the matrix is a square matrix. A square matrix basically means a matrix whose dimensions are a square. That is, like 2 times 2 will give you 4, but 2 times 3 is not a square. So you know that the number of rows must be equal to the number of columns. So you have 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4. That's when you can calculate or compute the determinant of a matrix. If it is not a square matrix, forget about the idea of determinants. And that's why square matrices are the most common and the most um, um, comfortable to use. Now, some other matrices would give you something else, but at the end of the day, you just find some properties that are not really essential to what you're doing. So the king of uh, matrices, or maybe generally linear algebra are square matrices because of all many properties that we can get from them. That's number one. Number two, the determinant of a matrix is a scalar. It's just a number. The number you can find on the number line or on the imaginary line, depending on what the entries of the matrix are. So you could have real numbers or imaginary numbers, but whatever you get when you find the determinant of a matrix is always a scalar which you can add or subtract or multiply or divide. You know how you have to be careful what the matrices are for you to multiply them, but when it comes to the determinants, because they're just numbers, you can add, supply, you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, square. You can even take the square root of a determinant. We can do all of that just with matrices. Okay, so I just told you two things. What's the third thing you need to know? You need to know this. Say you're given two matrices. The determinant of the first matrix added to the determinant of the second matrix, B, is not equal to the determinant of if you had already added both of them together. So let's say I decided to add these two matrices, I get another matrix. If I take the determinant and I get an answer here, the number here will not be the sum of these two numbers. So that's one thing you want to note. Okay, then the second one is that the determinant of A, if you multiply it by the determinant of B, it's going to be equal to the determinant of the product. So let's say you multiply these two together and you eventually take the determinant is the same thing as you getting the determinant separately and then multiplying them. And I'm going to focus on just two by two matrices. In the next video we're going to talk about the determinant of a three by three matrix and in another video we talk about the determinant of a three by three matrix using the rule of Saras and then we can talk about 4 by 4, 5 by 5. I'll do some work on determinants for now. Now, for those of you watching, if you've taken um, linear algebra or advanced linear algebra, do not drag me into the future. I am breaking it down for those who are just learning this for the first time. Okay, so let's begin the determinant computation. What exactly is the determinant? So let's say that you have a matrix M and M is A, B, C, D. This is a matrix. Then the determinant of M can be written this way. A, B, C, D. All you have to do is change this notation to this. Now this is a scalar, okay? It is not a fraction. I mean, sorry, it could be a fraction, it could be negative, positive, it could be zero, but what we know is that this is how you write it. And what does this mean? This simply means multiply A by D and subtract B times C. This is equal to A times D minus B times C. That's it. What we've written this way is actually this. 
So whenever you see four numbers, okay, and with straight bars around them, it means you're multiplying across this way, A times D minus B times C. That's the meaning of determinant. So let's compute the determinant of A. So number one, determinant of A um, will be equal to, we put this here, 3, 2, 1, minus 1. The determinant using this rule will be A times D minus B times C. Okay, A times D is minus 3, minus B times, B times C is going to be 2. So your answer is minus 5. We're done. It's so simple. Let's go to B. The determinant of B will be equal to the determinant of B, which is 1, 5, minus 2, minus 3. is going to be 1 times minus 3, which is minus 3, minus 5 times minus 2, which is going to be minus 10. So what you have is minus 3 plus 10, which is equal to 7. So one determinant is minus 5 and the other is 7. That's it. So now, why don't we try and verify this claim that I made? That if you add the two matrices together, the determinant of it will not give you the same thing. Okay, I'm just going to do the work. So number two, what is the determinant of A plus B? Well, it's going to be, now what is A plus B? Remember when you're adding matrices, the matrices just have to have the same dimensions, two by two plus two by two. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the corresponding entries, which is gonna be three plus one, that gives you four. Two plus five gives you seven. One plus minus two gives me minus one, and minus one plus minus three gives me minus four. So what is the determinant of A plus B? The same thing. 4 times minus 4 equals minus 16 minus 7 times minus 1 is minus 7. So this is minus 16 plus 7, which is minus 9. Ah, it's different. So minus 9 is not the same thing as minus 5 plus 7. See, this would give you 2 if you add them together, but if you add the matrices before taking the determinant, you get minus 9. So, you can see it justifies this claim. Now let's go to the third one. What if it's a product? The determinant of A times B. Now let's do the multiplication. Remember, when you multiply, you take the row against the column. So, it's going to be 3 times 1, which is 3, and then you have 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4. So, this is 3 and minus 4. 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So, the first entry here is minus 1. You go back, we want to deal with this one. So, we're going to still take the top and multiply the second column. So, we're still on top. So, don't forget, the top, the first entry, the top, the second entry. The top, the first entry, the top, the second entry. Top, first column, top, second column. So now the second column is going to be 15 times, sorry, 15 plus minus 6. What's 15 minus 6? That looks like a 9. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. So this is going to be, we now take go to the bottom part now. We do the same thing. This first column, this first entry. For the bottom, so it's going to be 1 times 1, and minus 1 times minus 2, so it's going to be 1 plus 2, that's 3. And here, we're going to have 1 times 5, which is 5, and then minus 1 times minus 3, which is 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. So here we go. Now, what's the determinant? We do the same thing. It's minus 8, if you multiply this to minus 3 times 9, which is 27. What is that? This is equal to minus 35. It looks like minus 35 is minus 5 times 7. It justifies the second claim that 
the determinant of the first times the determinant of the second is the determinant of the product of the matrices. In the next video, we're going to go to three by three matrices and then maybe four by four and then maybe five by five. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.